Thank you so much for your company this morning. Well, he has written 50 books over the last 20 years, including the bestseller The Anzac Puppy and the Johnny Danger DIY Spy series. Now, his latest book reinvents with a Kiwi spin some of the classic rhymes for kids. Please welcome to the cafe, Peter Millett. Welcome, welcome Peter. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, really nice to have you here. I want to address this in just a couple of moments. Um, <laughs> congratulations on the new book. Thank you. This one right here. Classic rhymes for Kiwi kids. Um, so after 50 books, what, how do you keep coming up with the new ideas? Well, I guess this is the thing. People say live your life one day at a time. Uh, for me, it's sort of one page at a time. So I, I don't know when it's going to run out. Um, so I'll just keep on going. And the other irony is I'm almost 50. So maybe when I hit 50, it stops. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope not, because this is great. Yeah, what made you take old rhymes that we know and grow up with and Kiwi-fy them? Uh, Fred Dagg. Oh, yeah, the, nice. book's, the book's yeah. dedicated to Fred Dagg. When I was a kid, I don't know if, if you guys listened to Fred Dagg, it was just, he was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we were a little England at that stage. Everything was the Wombles and all that sort of stuff. So when you hear Fred Dagg riffing like a Kiwi, I thought, well, why do we still talk about badgers and foxes? We don't have any of those things around here. Yeah. So true. So it's all Kiwi stuff. Nice. So it's only taken you how long to get to get, to get the book out? <laughs> well, for a deck, 70s? Yeah, like. yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it took a while. This this one actually was 10 years to ferment. They don't all take that long because I'd be here till I was 100, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's some really lovely rhymes in here. Can you give us an example of one of your favourites? Yeah, I think um, I mentioned before, uh, Dr. Opata was in Guatemala. That, to me is one of my personal favourites, because all through our childhood was Dr Foster went to Gloucester and had a mishap in the rain. And I think I've solved the reason why Dr Rapata fled Guatemala, because <laughs> he got really, really peed off of the rain. <laughs> no, and I love what you've done, because these are classic, the classic rhymes that have been kiwi so I'm going to read one for you, OK? <laughs> ba ba halfback, have you any ball? Yes, sir, yes, sir, in the mall. One for the passer, one down the lane, and one for the little boy who wins the game. Aww. That's awesome. Can I read my favourite? If you read your favourite, can I read my favourite? Yeah, you can. Okay, it's really quick. This is good. I know where you like this one too. Twinkle, twinkle, southern star, guiding sailors from afar, shining in the starry night like a glowing diamond kite. Twinkle, twinkle, southern star, now we know just where we are. Oh, nice. That's my favourite because when you're sailing in the southern ocean, or the southern hemisphere, and you see those stars, the southern star, southern cross, you know where you are. Thank you, Mel. It's exciting. (laughs) Nice work. Illustrations in here, absolutely incredible as well. Who did them? Yeah, and a great story. Scott is the opposite to me. I'm an Auckland later, you know, car park hunter. He's a high country hunter. In Queenstown, <laughs> and to be this is a fair dinkum. In the middle of making this book, I had to call him on the cell phone, and he said the reception's really bad. I'm just going hunting. <laughs> <laughs> so and you're like stuck in traffic. Yeah, so so you, you don't have a pen, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so Scott is an awesome. He writes himself as well, but he really, really pulled it out here. So we've got he's down south. I'm up north, so we've got the whole country covered. So awesome. why do you love writing for kids? What is it about kids? I think the biggest influence was my wife. Ruth is a primary teacher. And different things would have happened if I hadn't have met Ruth. I wanted to always write comedy for adults. Um, and then things changed. Uh, she said, can you write a story for the kids? I write a story. Can you come in and listen to it being read? And then why don't you go and stand in front of the kids? And that was Aww. probably one low tier below stand-up comedy oh. fright. Because the kids are really harsh. I was going to say, I yes. think that'd actually be harsher. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you're dressed incorrectly, you're out. <laughs> and this, were these coming too, sorry? These, yeah. these props? Yeah, yeah. So, so all of these feature in my books. This is one of my Johnny Danger books, Big Andy. He's an anaconda who eats evil villains. Um, the banana phone is from DIY Spy. And the clock, as I have to call it for schools, yes. is to measure my parking meter, how much money is I'm spending on parking. Right, OK. So <laughs> that would have cost you 30 bucks for 15 minutes, I think. <laughs> OK, so do you have a favourite author yourself, a yes. children's author? Yeah, and, and I'll give a quick two, two-part answer. For rhymes, actually, Pam Ears. Oh, oh yes. 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 Yeah, she, and she's still going. Love her. Uh, for authors, Roald Dahl. Ah, oh, nice. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I heard that at school. I wanted to be a writer. One chapter into that. Because yeah. I went to the teacher I said, you know... Who is this Charlie? Oh, it's all made up. The chocolate bars are fake. I thought, oh, I like, I like that. And, <laughs> and Roald Dahl, he had, you know, some pretty crazy rituals when he was writing. Do you have any rituals? No, sadly, no. Um, I, I'm pretty, um, pretty, pretty, pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah. Right. Except I do. Well, like... I don't know if you'd be straightforward. <laughs> well, I, I do like to make uh, wacky videos where the kids challenge me to do something. Like one school said. You there with the microphone, sing for us. I said, oh, I can't do that, but I can dance. <laughs> <laughs> and then one thing led to another, and then we made a music video. Now, before, because you obviously like a bit of acting, because before you did all this, you were a bit of an actor. You've got a link to Tom Selleck, haven't you? Yes, I have. Oh, yes, the broken toast. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. were you, Tom? Well, just quickly, I decided if writing didn't work out, I could at least have a shot at acting. The acting didn't happen. <laughs> so what they said was, you'd make a great background actor. So basically stand there all day long. <laughs> 
And I got a phone call saying, uh, what's your collar size? I said, 44, great. We've got a roll for you. <laughs> that a world... picture, Nick. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, a World yeah. War II movie where we don't have anyone who could fit this collar size. <laughs> <laughs> so here I go. And then they put me in a bunker scene for four days shooting and Tom Selleck is playing Eisenhower. Now, me being a newbie, I lean on a table. It wasn't a real table. The whole thing just <gasps> flipped over. Tom walks past. Bang! Oh. Yeah, and he just looks at me like I'm thinking, oh, like, he'll go, ah, hey, good one, mate. <laughs> oh no! You'll never thought, work again. Yeah, so where do I hide for four days in a bunker? Because I'm six foot five. <laughs> <laughs> so I just stood closely to the wall as much as possible. So wow. my first movie experience was shameful and humiliating. Yes, <laughs> and Tom remembers it fondly as well. And it was a good luck omen because the writing worked out. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. It did, did, did pan out, didn't it? Which is lucky, really. Very well, lucky. well, speaking of the writing, you've got this book out and you've had many others. What is going to be your next project, out of curiosity? Yeah, well, the next one is actually a slightly secret centre project. So if it's just between you two and me, is that well, OK? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah OK. Just, 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 just with it. OK, it's going to be a very, very secret project for the Ronald McDonald House, a New Zealand Christmas story with Trev Nicholas, who is the 45th descendant of St Nicholas. OK. That's cool. Nice. He's from Thai Happy. So, but if we can keep Trev's secret a secret, you'll get to hear about that very shortly. Okay, oh, that's cool. awesome. That sounds, that sounds really good. I'm really looking forward to that yeah, one. Good. Oh, well, thank you for bringing... What's his name? Big Andy. Big Andy. Big Andy. <laughs> well, his name, Andy. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> is he called Big Andy? Yeah. <laughs> Only at times. Uh, thank you for bringing them all in. This has been an absolute pleasure great. chatting with you. The book is great as well. I really love yes. it. Yes, and cool. I think your parking is just about ready to explore. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and Classic Rhymes for Kiwi Kids is out now, and it's available where all good books are sold.